sound better. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a short crash course on a couple of quick commands and workflow tips uh, that you can use within your template and in your production and sound design to uh, help things go a little quicker and just some stuff that I had wish I had known a lot earlier um, in my path of using Ableton, uh, some stuff I use a lot still. So um, yeah, let's let's dive right in. The, the first thing that is uh, a really awesome tool is the option to insert at time and to duplicate and delete um, time in live and remove time completely. So um, I really like using this for kind of the purpose of um, being able to arrange things in a much uh, simpler manner and it, it just way quicker. Uh, so before and other DAWs that I've used, um, a lot of times if you want to take, let's say we have these this A section and this B section. Now, for starters, um, a lot of times you'll make something right on the first bar of, uh, you know, the first beat of the first bar in live and realize, oh, dang it, I wanted to add an intro or I wanted to do this. And instead of just grabbing everything, I mean, in this case, it wouldn't be that hard to grab everything and move to make a little more space. But in um, when you got a project with a million tracks on it, if you have to select all that and move it around, Ableton can get real laggy, and if you miss the spot you were trying to land on, you can lose automations. You can just have all sorts of weird stuff happen. So um, I just use the insert time uh, command, which is control I, and you can select how much time you want to insert. And when you hit OK, we added four bars there. And um, now it inserted that silence for us where our playhead was. Um, so that's super useful. Now we could add an intro before this A section or something like that. Um, the, uh, the next time command that I like to use is uh, the duplicate and delete time and paste time. There's also cut time as well. Um, so another thing I used to always be having to do was in uh when i was like using logic or other daws was i would uh realize oh man i really want this a section to be twice as long but now i gotta take everything and move it and it was just a total pain in the butt um so similar to the insert time command what you can do now is just select a portion of time and then if you hit edit duplicate time is where it's located at or if you do Control shift D it will take this time and insert it after and it'll be every single track and automation and whatever you had in this Amount of time you can put there or let's say you want to take this a section and throw it on the back end Like you didn't like it here You want to shorten this and put it over here instead of moving it to a safe area taking this and uh, Moving it over and then moving it there, which is what a lot of people have had to do. You can just take this cut that time and then paste that time or control shift V. You can use those commands again as well. Um, control shift X and control shift V. So we'll back this up to, so it's uh, right about here, but that, that just shows some of the things you can do with these time commands are really save you a lot of time and they, uh, just make arranging a lot. Uh, it, it opens up your options because you're not stuck on the timeline now. You can really select uh, things without having to waste a lot of time moving it to safe areas and switching stuff around. And I think it can kind of take your workflow both compositionally and just creatively uh, to the next level. So it's, it's really good. It's super practical and also just really uh, kind of fun to be able to move your tracks around and whatnot. Um, so then uh, the other thing I'm going to go over, it's kind of similar on the timeline is uh, that I like to use a lot is locators. So the way that locators work is you'll select a point um, and you'll right click and do it when this uh, as though you were playing a uh, track or a point in a track. So I got this A section, B section. 
So uh, let's say I wanted the A section to be uh, have a locator on it. I could right click right above it, add a locator, and I'm gonna call this um, A section. And then maybe we'll put a locator on the B section as well. Okay, cool. Oops, name B organization. People like that, let me do that. Okay, cool. So um, now these locators, so if you click, it'll go right to that section. Now that's cool, but one thing I like to do is assign a key command to them. So I'll put, if you go up to, as though you were mapping a MIDI controller, if you go up to the top here where the piano roll is and stuff and hit, or excuse me, where the uh, musical typing is and you hit key, now when you open up there, you can select anything on the screen and use a key. So I'm gonna assign uh, the button one to this uh, locator and the button two to the B. So I like doing this because if you're working on a track and let's say you're jumping around comparing things, you're able to, and comparing sections and kind of, you want to have a quick hand so you're not always scrolling around to, you know, a bunch of different places to find where you wanted to play from. You can just kind of quickly go toggle between these points and, you know, we'll add another locator, call it C section, um, and assign another key to that. So this. Um, so now, when we're playing, we can play from all these locations, and it just, it kind of helps, um, with a lot of different things, uh, when you're working on a large scale production, or the other thing you can use this for is for, like, if you use Ableton for backing tracks, um, you can also, like, for a live setting, um, you can use these select, uh, um, selectors to, uh, queue up your backing tracks so you'd have a set list and have song here song one here song two there and song three over here and you can assign that to a midi controller so when your drummer hits a certain note or when you hit a pad on your midi controller it'll start your um playhead from there so you could have your backing track uh for your first song play when you hit that button so that's a cool thing and then the last thing that i'll show you is um that I use a lot is groups within groups. So um, if we are looking at our template we made earlier, we've got this external group, great, that's awesome. Um, you know, let's say we wanna call this external group one and duplicate it. Let's say we had another instrument there, we call this external group two um, and uh, maybe even another one. Um, I'll duplicate that. I'll we'll call this three. Okay, cool. So we'll fold these away. Now it's really nice because we could take all of these groups and let's say we um, want it. Oops, I think I accidentally duplicated one twice. My bad. Um, Let's say we wanted these to have, um, you know, they all kind of exist uh, on in their own independent way, but let's say we wanted them to all have their own master effect on top of these and we didn't want to create some bus. So these groups in Ableton 10 have made it so you can now group all of these groups and put those, um, now fold that away, and uh, put a master effect on all of these groups. So it, it almost makes it like you have, um, you're able to bust things or uh, able to put effects on groups and organize things in such a way without having to bust them as you used to. So you could have, if you maybe, um, you have like a drum rack that has a bunch of kick drums on it or a series of, um, you know, different drum kits or something like that, that you then wanted to run all through the same bus, you could group those. And it also just really helps with organization. You could have all your live instruments up here that have all these groups within groups below them, but you can still group them down to one thing and just call them all external and that way um, your project just looks so much cleaner and things stay a lot more organized so I think with with optimizing these templates it's just important to learn a few of these little tricks that make um, your template even more versatile and even more uh, kind of easy to use right off the bat um, 
and will make it so your tracks you're not totally lost in them like when I use this system of having more common template and uh, grouping things within each other um, I'm able to hop back into projects that at you know back before I was doing a lot of this stuff would be totally convoluted and there's a lot of songs I just almost never want to open the project file for anymore because they're so uh, like cluttered and kind of uh, disorganized and I think if you start out um, a little bit more organized um, from the template and follow some of these rules then you'll make it a lot more painless when you're uh, diving back in to pull elements from old tracks or reference old things you'll kind of have this common place that uh, all of your tracks exist on so yeah um, that kind of concludes a six-part video series and I uh, hope that you're able to take some of these tricks and run with them and use them for um, and, and use your creative, uh, you know, brain to apply um, some of these techniques to your production and workflow.